breakfast. Ah, <sighs> this is the life. Wait a sec. Isn't something important supposed to happen today? Oh, today's our big day! We're supposed to leave the Fortress of Meripede! Come on, we've got to go complete the release procedures now! <laughs> Too slow. Everything was futile. Please sign here. This document will be effective immediately upon signing, and you two may exit the Fortress of Meripede via the regular channels. It's been so long since we've been to the surface. Let's hurry up and... Ah! Uh, what's happening? <sighs> I'm fine, thanks. But I wonder what that tremor was just now. Let's go ask the Duke! Following me. Your Grace! Ah, good to see you two. Is there something you wish to see me about? Yeah, what was with that earthquake just now? Ah, that. The tremor didn't originate from the seafloor. In fact, it seems it came from the surface. Over the years of serving as the warden here, I have developed a sense for distinguishing between what occurs on the surface and what occurs underwater. Besides, the seal that Monsieur Neuvillette set in place won't fail so easily. So, the fortress is okay? If you recall our last incident, if there really were a problem, there would be crowds of inmates in a panic right now. Huh, you've got a point. Okay, seems we need to get back up to the surface and ask about what happened. Uh, by the way, do you know what day it is today? Hmm, I believe today is this month's pipe cleaning day. Wait, seriously? Ah, yes. Have you completed your release papers? Yep. Ah, uh, it's you two. Uh, are you leaving now? That's right! Today is our last day in prison! But now that Paimon says that, it doesn't feel like we were confined here. It's actually been pretty nice! Oh yeah, Paimon feels fond of this place now! Well, then be sure to come back and visit! I'll miss you! If you've signed the release papers, then you're free to go. The guards will escort you out. You're not going to see us off? <laughs> I knew you'd ask. Alright, sure. Let's go. Well, you actually agreed. Uh, no worries, you must be busy. Paimon was just joking. Ah, so you do have a polite side, I see. <laughs> After being down here for so long, I imagine you must feel like you're lacking companionship. Shall I come along too? Yeah, don't worry, we'll come back to see you. Uh, Paimon really likes the cafeteria here. The chefs sure do know how to make good grub! I hope you won't be here as convicts the next time I see you. We'll do our best to stay out of trouble! Well, it seems our work in the Fortress of Meripede is finished! That's the end of another chapter in our journey! And since Nervlet was the one who asked us to come here, we should probably go report to him now. Next up, the Palais Marmonia! You're going to see Monsieur Nervilette? <laughs> Please pass on our kind regards. 
I'm sure just your regards will do, no? Hmm, I believe it would be the polite thing to do. You're right. I've heard the Palais has been terribly busy these days. Tell him that I hope he hasn't been overwhelmed by the recent string of troubles. Monsieur Nirvelet did say you'd be welcome at any time. Excuse me, would you mind helping me take a look at this report? I'll be right there. Sorry, I've got my hands full here. You can see yourselves in. Everyone's so busy. Seems a lot has been happening. Hello. You've come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. In the meantime, please, have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, let the Melusine outside know. That's all right. We just ate. Very well, then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. Alright, that should wrap things up for now. Are you done with your work? Yes, sorry to keep you waiting. Today should be the day you were released from the Fortress of Meripede, and it appears that you've managed to complete all the release paperwork. That's right, and we came here to see you right away! Hmm, a massive whale. Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the Primordial Sea. A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tevat. Therefore, we can only assume that Child is presently immersed in Primordial Seawater. Immersed in Primordial Seawater? What the hell? And is he okay? Most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place. I'm not completely sure how he could have gotten there myself. Yes? What is it? Ah, oh, right! Paimon felt it too! We asked the Duke and he said it wasn't from underwater, so we figured you might know something about it! It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. The source of the tremor was here on the surface, near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. The water levels rose? Oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time, and have already returned to normal now. However, I still have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. If the change in water levels is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, and the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. Navia should be in Poisson, right? We need to go check on her! I would also like to go there as soon as possible, but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet. We must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes. I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first. I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I've finished things here. Please be careful.
should be around here, right? We need to make sure she's still... Uh, I know means we need to check on her. Huh, too slow. Watch your balance. Uh, all right. Just hurry. Uh, I'm not young anymore. How will I survive on my own? <laughs> my Desiree. <laughs> Oh, he looks pretty sad. <laughs> My leg! <laughs> My leg! How could this have happened? <laughs> it hurts! <laughs> Just hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. Following me. Oh, it's Navia. She's over there. Hey, Navia, are you okay? <sighs> You're here. Situation in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could. Yes, as you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact. Demoiselle, there was a wounded resident next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. He's wounded. How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... He jumped down then. Find the leader of Squad 1 and tell him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. Understood. I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right, you'll be in charge. I'm sorry. Where were we? Uh, the situation in Poisson? Ah, uh, right. Allow me to explain. A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. At first, everyone thought that something might have exploded in the waterways. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water leaking from somewhere. Everyone on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. They were all dissolved. Those who realized what was happening started to flee in a panic, desperately trying to get to higher ground. Many were injured in the stampede and some, some people fell from significant heights. The Spina di Rosula initiated rescue operations as quickly as possible, but there have been a lot of casualties. Fortunately, 
The water began to recede after some time, and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the headcount, but we'll have some numbers soon. How awful. And all of this just came out of nowhere. It was quite frightening indeed. I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there any way we can help, Navia? Thank you for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. You don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. Don't say that, Navia. That's what friends are for. <sighs> Demoiselle, we've got a situation here. Uh, I'll be right there. Sorry, I, I need to go for now. And off she goes. Seems it might be a while before she can take a break. Okay, the wounded are being tended to, and we finished a preliminary headcount. More support has just arrived, so... I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Of course... We should remain ready for anything, and continue doing our best to rescue others. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Traveler, Paimon, would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Huh? Right now? Thank you. Squall Fury. Not a lot of people here, huh? Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson. Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Navia? Sorry, I... I just... Malus and Silver... They won't ever come back here again. What should I do, Papa? Huh? What happened to them? Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still... I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And... And they were caught in the seawater. <laughs> what, what should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid. But... But I could at least hold a funeral for my father, and I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just... 
gone. I just can't. Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus's grave. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? Yet the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Hey, stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it will save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. That makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously. All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I promise to let them rest in peace here. But here I am breaking that promise. <laughs> I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. I don't usually cry, really. Paimon doesn't know how to help you feel better. But... Well... She understands how you feel. I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But... Now that I think about it... That never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Luce and Silver have helped me so much, but by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. We'll stay with you. Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. Obana, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville, Julianne, Esson, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still... It's okay. I, I know what you're thinking. And... You're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But... We were able to save more than we anticipated. The overall outcome indicates that the cost... Was worth it. Right! Don't think that way, Navia! One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes! You're right. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh, uh, really? Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. Uh, the knave? What are you doing here? Ah, uh, is everything going well on your side? Yes, my people are carrying out the mission according to your request. All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we're preparing to relocate them to higher ground. 
As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Thank you, very much. Wait! Do you two know each other? We just met recently. Right, Miss Navia? Hmm... Usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter. But that doesn't quite fit this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. Thanks to the Knave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area, in any case, so it was nothing. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I apologize for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking head counts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. As I've told this traveler before, I know of the prophecy, and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. Without your help, there would have been many more casualties. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. Don't say that. You and your subordinates did everything you could. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. And they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They... chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. Water is life to Fontaine's people, and it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Terre. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Alright, then we'll just... Uh... Huh? This isn't right. Paimon thought you would ask us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. That is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. But there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. You and I both know that there may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Meripede's Sluice Gate, and this time it was the Water Levels in Poisson. These are both signals. Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's Intelligence Network with you. During some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. The ruins date back to ancient times, and seem to be worth investigating in many ways. Judging by the dating of the ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. So, 
That's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet have all been dispatched to higher ground to assist affected residents. Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. Which is why I want to give you this task. The House of the Hearths members see each other as family, but Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet said that they also see you as such, even though you are not from the House. I'm sure you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh! That somehow makes Paimon feel kinda happy! The intel I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Got it! So all we gotta do is go to some ruins, right? Pfft, we can handle that! Excuse me, but may I tag along? You wish to join, Miss Navia? But are you sure you're up to exploring some ruins? You need to rest! Well, I'm sad, yes, but I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. As my father's successor, I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, I'm also doing this for myself. I need something, a distraction, to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Since you put it that way, I have no objections. What do you say, Traveler? All right. The ruins are to the south of Poisson. Here's the map. Okay, the three of us will handle it. Come on, let's pack up and get going! So, are these the ruins the knave was talking about? Oh, talk about old! They seem to be pretty ancient, all right. Let's go in and have a look. Just be careful. This place has also been contaminated by primordial seawater. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. Right! You can't go down if there's primordial seawater! It's too dangerous and it won't be any help for you to just stay here! Don't get by my wrong, we're not saying you're useless, it's just that... No, 
you're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. That complicates things. Maybe the only way left is forward. In that case, do you want to wait for us here? The water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So, staying here wouldn't be safe either. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. Alright. Come with us for now then, but please be careful. Demoiselle? Huh? Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Would you be standing here till dark if I hadn't come to get you? Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Hmm? Oh. Uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh. I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. Oh, right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. Is something the matter, demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Right. Yes. I remember now. Oh? Miss Navia? Ah, Mr. Malus. And Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Uh, how have you been? I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh yes. One moment, I have it right here. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? 
Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Malus, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, demoiselle. Perfect. In that case, we'll swap out some of the decorative plants for some of Mrs. Burnett's flowers. Very well. Wait. Something seems to be off here. Excuse me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? That's right. Is something wrong? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Miss Navia, here you are! I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. My trial? Wait, well, why would I need to go to the Opera House? Yes, she's right, Demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. Oh? Uh, all right then. Look, it's Navia! She's here! And her two attendants are with her! <sighs> Goodness, everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly... excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? And as for the judge... Uh, huh? Where's Monsieur Neuvillette? Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. All right. But are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously? <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is? And why I am standing trial. My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. As all here know, you are Master Callus' successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. We are one big family, all of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us. Forever. Huh? What are you saying? Uh, everything you have said is correct. 
I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but what is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Ah, oh, well, if that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> <laughs> know all these people. Why are they laughing? <sighs> I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right! Uh, Malus? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty! Stay here, Navia! You're one of us! Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend Our Lady. Mr. Zronville, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro! Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro, and in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. Now I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals? To become independent? Do you mean to defy our justice? If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head... It hurts. Demoiselle. Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. I remember now. Everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen. And Mr. Giverny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier. Even Malus and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but... But they're all dead. Don't be afraid. And don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd! Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority, and in the Nation of Trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape! We shall keep Navia here with us! Mr. Malus and Mr. Silver, must you be so stubborn? How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the Collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. After all that happened, she should not be left alone in Poisson. What are you saying? No more excuses! She says we're jealous. Jealous! 
How could she possibly be an independent individual? What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us! Miss... Navia... She... Silence! Uh, that's... Uh, Monsieur Nervillette! Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. How are thanks, Monsieur Nervillette? Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Loose. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that this shall be our last goodbye. Malus... Silver... Quickly! You must come now! Goodbye, Demoiselle. Farewell. Uh, no, wait! Just a second! Hey! Uh, Navia? <laughs> You're awake. Good. <sighs> I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? Paimon could give you a hug. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... Hmm. Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second, but they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Were it not for their intervention, I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. Wait! Did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. <sighs> I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <sighs> to think that they'd keep doing so even after death. <sighs> Please come with me. Nevelette, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm... I suppose so. Ah, Sijuin! I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No way! Don't worry! She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sijuin would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Oh, and the Duke also says hi! Even though Sijuin made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Thank you. I have indeed been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. I... Uh... Let's chat about something else, then. So, Nevelet, uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Mm hmm Yes, of course. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, let's try something else. Um, how did you find...
find these ruins. Did the knave tell you? Yes, in fact. I had arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, I ran into the nave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Yeah, we originally planned to meet up with you, but we thought you might still be busy with all those official documents. We didn't think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? <sighs> I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting like that. I'm feeling much better now. I guess we should get going again. Will you come with us, Monsieur Nervillette? Yes, if you wouldn't mind my company. Rises. Looks like we've reached the end. This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. We should just leave them be for now. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. Uh... Say what? It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. 
There's a person kneeling here. She seems so dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? And is that Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? And is that a ring of people around her? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? The fourth image. I know this one. This exactly matches the content of the prophecy. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Hmm. More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it, most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. Don't blame yourself, Monsieur Nervalet. Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates. This says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still, Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. That's right! If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third? Where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? And yet the order is reversed here. If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. Egeria, then. I had never met her, but her appearance here does match the records. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies, as if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or... Some people once saw these slates? But who would have created these slates and left these words here? Hmm. It seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah, we better get somewhere safe for now. Following me. Let's split up here. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. You still have energy for that, Navia? Paimon's already beat! <sighs> Just head back to the Fluff Sandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Traveler, I will go talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. Are you really going to talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. 
She has long been harboring secrets and will not give them up easily, which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. Alright, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Fluvsandra is always open to you, as ever. So please don't think you're an imposition. <sighs> Alright. I'll be on my way then. Ah, we're finally back! Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Yay! And there's good food too! Now the, uh, no, the boss is the best! <laughs> Ooh, desserts! Nice, these are all Paimons! <sighs> Paimons already starting to forget what happened today. Oh, that voice. Is that who I think it is? Huh? It's you two! What are you doing in Fontaine? Mona? Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here! Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a Mondstadter surname? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was... Well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Thrice as great? That's so... petty. I know, right? <sighs> that's just how she is. She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but when she took me in, she changed her name to Trismagistus. Talk about excessive. Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's alright if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. Are you, Mona? You're from Mondstadt, right? Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. 
That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the Steambird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecy as an astrologist. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less... scary. What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine, even that of Altevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. A visionary? Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Of course. The old hag could do it. And I'd bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zirkel colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Huh? Uh, are you sure? Hmm... All right. I'll help you. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Thanks, Mona! You're amazing as always! Oh, well, this is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. That's the greatest of astrologists for you! Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best! Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. Oh, sorry. I came to see what all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. And there she goes, quick as rushing water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. <sighs> if Paimon hadn't spoken for you, it'd be you getting all the weird looks! Huh! The things Paimon does for you! Hmm, <laughs> that's more like it! and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Like I said, I've already explained everything. And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fossilor, are you not? Look at this. This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. <laughs> y you mean... they're all... We did not arrive in time to avert this disaster. And I will not have it happen again. I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. 
Do you know anything about those? Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? That's correct. Which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. The other three feature different images that seem to correlate to the prophecy. <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't! I've never seen such slates! I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information regarding the previous Archon? My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? I understand your concerns, but I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina, but I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. <laughs> you... Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not, it'll all turn out fine. That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! <sighs> Did Farina not notice us standing by the door? Wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. I assume you've been outside for a while now? Oh! You noticed! Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic, though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again, a state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding, so why did she keep refusing to engage? Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. And she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. <sighs> if at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but 
We must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. Hmm, but who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? Well, that's everyone, huh? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That naturally makes it the best choice. And here you are, drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? That's what family should do. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. <laughs> it's nice to enjoy tea here, you know? Care for a cup? Ahem. <clears throat> Lend me your ears, everyone. <clears throat> or... Perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Uh, me? No, I don't think I can. Hmm. Uh, then, how about you, good sir? I fear that I will cause the mood on this boat to become as somber as it is in court. <laughs> well then, I guess we're lucky we've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful! The spotlight at last! I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was a little long-winded, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> you might be right. Anyway, to cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well... Uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Chlorand. And used on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? Hmm. <laughs> he is glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. In that case... <clears throat> Do any of you have experience... hunting? Not that I recall. Fremine and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette... Um... Ah, oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, I'm afraid not. You may or may not have heard. But Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marachose Hunters. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the Hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, Bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. 
That's the kind of method I would count on. <laughs> Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevelet? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. But I do have one more question for you, Monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Hmm. Kind, as always. However, our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Uh, so are we going hunting together? Huh. We haven't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kinda works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, and the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. But we shall require much more courage than any hunter to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. But everyone seemed pretty fired up, huh? Paimon thought they'd be at least a little frightened. Well, Fremenay was, now that Paimon thinks about it, but everyone else just looked a little surprised. Uh, well... It's hard to say. Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing. But with you around, Paimon sure will do great! After all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, huh? Uh, did you just pour some tea? Paimon didn't notice you doing that at all! Uh, then what's that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. Have you forgotten me already? Wait... You are familiar! You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru! <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. <sighs> You're feeling lost now. Just as you were feeling previously. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Hmm. Can 
consider me a passerby, just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. What? Th then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tevat so easily be changed? Ah, so you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the god's gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but... It also sounds kind of scary. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. The voice... It's gone! Walked in on some lively banter. Mona! Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Did she have pink hair by any chance? Why, yes! It was Charlotte! I assume you've heard of her, no? That daredevil journalist? I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but... How can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once! Ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. Huh? Goodness gracious, are you serious? She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, the old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd... Be. <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and n has been around for longer than that. Whoa. The Hexen Circle sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... 
Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Traveler? Paimon? Are you two alright? Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? Huh. You do have a point! <laughs> there I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff... I oh! I need to get going! It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. Paimon feels kind of moved by what Mona said. But also kind of sad, too. Hey, Traveler. Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. Uh, what's going on? Let Paimon see! The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy. But that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blonde adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, the Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh. Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her! She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? Ugh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. Too slow. Quit following me. We're here! <sighs> Paimon's hungry. Should we go in and get something to eat? We were in. Let's give it another go. I'm sure it'll be great. One slice of cake, please. Ah, someone showed up after all. Oh, wait, you're the one from the Palais Marmonia. Oh, 
are you here to buy cake too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Wait, did he really say something like that? That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. Do you come here often? Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. Uh. Then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon, and you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore? What would you think? But why would it close? Well, Paimon doesn't know either, but... Maybe... Maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Oh, the prophecy. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Huh. Don't be sad. Excuse me, could I have two more slices of cake to go? These two slices are for you. Sijuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh, you know Sijuin? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily, yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? Mm -hmm. Bye! And there she goes! All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. It's more delicious than last time! And the flavor gets even better with a sip of tea. It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow. Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. Charlotte and have a chat. Wow! If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? Ha! You've got some nerve! You just used us to make some quick mora! Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Really? Oh, you're the best! <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? A friend of ours met you a while back. And when she mentioned it, we thought of coming to see you. Her name's Mona. Ah, so you know Miss Mona as well. She's a guest columnist for our paper. Really good one, too. She's so young and already such a brilliant astrologist. So she mentioned me? What did she say? She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary Traveler and Paimon? Huh? So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Oh, of course it doesn't! That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. Oh, in that 
case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? Oh, so that's a yes? Ooh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... <laughs> Whew, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Wait, Charlotte, Paimon's still got a question for you. Hmm? And what's that? If, just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would you do today? Huh, that's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood, I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. But anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. That's so nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? The sea breeze and scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? Hmm... Paimon's been thinking... If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow... Where would we go and what would we do? No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. You mean... still traveling? Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. Ah, oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Oh, you're from the Palais Marmonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Monsieur Nervilac sent me to look for you two before. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Yes, inside the Opera House. The Mari Chaussee Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. A riot? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House. 
and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her, loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. And before she could respond, others started to join in. The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. So, you mean she's still missing? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her, but we don't have any leads yet. That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? Good. Monsieur Nervilad sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Don't worry, this is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Ah, oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. Well, sounds like we should hurry over to Poisson then. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. And, as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervale was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. Huh! Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. Cool, huh? In that case, there's not a moment to lose! Poisson, here we come! This place looks deserted. Guess all the survivors must have evacuated already. All that's left here are signs of devastation. Could Farina really be here? Let's try to find her as soon as possible. Right over there! She really is here all on her own. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all meaningless. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. <laughs> I'm sorry. But what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? Uh, who, who's that? Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. <clears throat> <laughs> so, it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Farina, 
You were crying just now, weren't you? The tear stains on your face are obvious. Uh, what do you mean, tear stains? Uh, oh, <laughs> I remember. The show at the Opera House earlier this morning was so moving. I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. They even dare to tout their Archon. I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellet and those people from the Mari Chose Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> I... Uh, of course not! Hey, there she is! The Hydro Archon's over there! Quick, after her! Uh, Farina, those people seem to be after you. Uh, the, uh, they are? Uh, uh, they're just some rabid fans who want to cut the line because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? Mm, that's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. Uh, Farina just ran off! Quick, we have to catch up with her! be the place, right? Hey, Farina! There's a good hiding spot over here! Quick, come to Paimon before the rest of them catch up to you! Uh, wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here! Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Yeah, I hope you're right. But the people of Poisson, they've already... It's true. I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. I once had informants all over to Vat, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. We cannot make an enemy of the Divine. No matter what we do, the will of the Heavenly Principles will have its way, and the prophecy shall be fulfilled. <laughs> Give up. I do love the sound of that phrase. 
It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. Indeed, I've thought about giving up so many times, especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. <sighs> well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden, but honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. Share my burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. A witness. <sighs> yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... I... Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our god. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice, the embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. You... you would draw your blade against a god? Ahem. <clears throat> I see. It seems like you have made up your mind. Paimon can't believe it! She... she just surrendered! Hmm... What the heck is going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... a human? Wow, how utterly humiliating. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? Uh, it would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. 
Looking for excuses again, huh? I raise my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I too am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> but now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice! This time, I will protect you. Applaud and rejoice! One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the Opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words, this shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine! The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fossilor, will now begin! Woohoo! Oh, now we're making history! <sighs> Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on! Didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? All right, then. Who will be my opponent in this trial? The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tivat, my accuser and fated opponent. So, please allow me to ask, as a final question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? Well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina? And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. That's right. That house was a magic box, rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, this performance was only made possible with Father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. We had to select a location, construct a giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. 
So, in other words, the earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? That's right. It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. <laughs> then, I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. As for you, Traveler, I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. Oh? <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> It's fine. It matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Sir Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too! Hey, Charlotte! Oh, let Paimon see! Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh, <gasps> wait! Then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine! So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument! Let's quickly confirm the information in it. Just think of it as a refresher, alright? You've defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duels you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, all right. Pipe this a Fatui Harbinger. She's an extraordinary person. Her instinct must mean something. The f the words. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. <laughs> oh, come on, Nervilet. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legalese. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course. It is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true. But my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud who's never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what was that? Lady Farina's a fraud? Hey... I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? Charge accepted. Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? Uh, <sighs> Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How 
can I be guilty? There is no way that I, Fossilor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. Yeah, even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but, but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. See? <laughs> Even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor! Are you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? We have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? Your life. <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. You sensed it too, huh, Nervalet? Lady Farina is actually a human? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. Oratrice. But weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared Child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. 
While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules that all should respect and follow. <laughs> so, you neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? The real Hydro Archon? Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... you can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> she's still throwing out all kinds of excuses. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. How can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an Archon? If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. You don't need to go that far. I... Uh... Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into Indemnidium! Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives! Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? <laughs> Isn't that a huge stretch? Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? It seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? Please? You've got to believe me! If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And then all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? Enough! That's enough! Tell me then, if I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument. Uh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. from the primordial sea. And that means... 
Since you insist on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions of you being the latter. Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. <sighs> Super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now, I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As everyone knows, a massive flood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives, including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But, if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? <sighs> Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. Well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water without saying a single word. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. That could only mean... What's going on? Is she really planning to... Uh, that's not what we thought she would... <sighs> Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> what? Hey! <sighs> I... I'm fine! Look! Look at me, everyone! My hand is still here! I haven't been dissolved! Will you believe me now? I really am your Archon! I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water! Really, was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Miss Siegwin? If you're present, Miss Siegwin, please come forward and attend to the defendant. Siegwin? Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few seconds. Hmm... Let me see... Mm -hmm. That should be enough! Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Seedween. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that... She was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. Thank you, Miss Siegwin. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Oh, wait, what did she just say? I didn't get dissolved! Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... 
you... Listen to me! Listen to me, everyone! Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks! What happened just now didn't prove a single thing! Think about it! How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? Also, also, if I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? <laughs> I don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone. The odds are just too stacked against her now. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. I don't think anything she says at this point will sway the people who's too stacked against her now. In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... Guilty. We shall now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon, guilty to be punished via the death sentence. Uh, the... the death sentence? That's actually one of the available sentences? I've always thought that it was just a myth. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrice? We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things, so she'd tell us the truth. How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences, is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? Yeah! Even Fauché wasn't sentenced to death by the Oratrice! You know, the real evil mastermind behind the serial disappearances case! Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now, the Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this mean? Um, excuse me, if I may interrupt. 
Is the trial still going? Fremenay! Oh, you finally made it! I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. Is... that the first Prophecy Slate? Huh. So the Nave privately arranged for Fremenade to try and find the missing slate! I looked everywhere, and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But has the trial already concluded? Then... doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no... Father will be disappointed in me. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Fremine. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. Hmm. Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates, and would like you to come here and confirm their contents. I believe I've now made sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kinda talking about? In truth, Everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Okay, let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paima will do her best to help you remember. Slate describes what you just said. It seems to show the previous Hydro Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. Does that mean that Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimo wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating in the sky, and the Hydro Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. This must be the point when the Hydro Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydro Archon sin are the same thing? The third slate shows the Hydro Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydro Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after... That incident, it was just a question of when and not if. We know from the case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater. And the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. Perhaps what is about to take place 
has all happened before. And the true sin of the Hydro Archon that Nervalet mentioned, and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, has recorded on the stone slates. not as simple as falling into the sea. When Navia fell into the sea, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. The stone slates show the people gathered around the Hydro Archon in the sea. Could that be alluding to the same thing? The prophecy from the stone slates found its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. The fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly. primordial sea but won't cease to exist, their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid! The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness, and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripede was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what. The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light. some truly shocking revelations. Let's hear them. Incredible. Linny, did you hear that? We're... not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater. And how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. That could also explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us? And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the Opera Epicles. The twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. Yeah! Isn't the image here just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? In the end, 
the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. Hmm. Well? <laughs> Did you get it? I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the Seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanids' blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. So you... I... We were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian, but it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slate's respective positions are, in fact, correct. A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. The Nation of Fontaine is the Nation of Hydro, as well as the Nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. You may also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. Yes, it refers to our present situation. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, 
everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. Uh, what should we do? Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. <sighs> Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Traveler, I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. About the fourth slate, you probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. It was both dream and reality. Culprit that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it is chosen to make an appearance here. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Therefore, when it left the primordial sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. 
Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again, once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him, the Whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. That battle maniac! We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this! Anyway, now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? It is too late. It had already absorbed too much of the Primordial Sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the god's gaze does not fall? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. the death sentence. Farina! No, I still need answers. That shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor? Why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. 
Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity, and the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable, as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way, the person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? 
even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been five hundred years, and all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. you to come onto the stage. Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. All right, all right, it is not my intent to reprimand you. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. <laughs> Do not jest. Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. Audience. The performance is experiencing a technical difficulty, but worry not. The guards shall resolve it soon. Time to get my apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Hey, what gives? The audience is still watching me, you know. Guards? Wait, where are the guards? Guards! The wind moves me. Be not nervous. Be not afraid. 
I am before you. Wait a moment. You're... mirror me? How can this be? Hmm. <laughs> mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me. What do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? Oh, wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <sighs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. There is no escaping it. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Will I dissolve too? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. <laughs> Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales, with all the people of Fontaine on one side, and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed? Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember, your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. 
You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it. The Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ahem! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epiclays. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Verena de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalise. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. <gasps> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so... Modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? Uh, if you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Mir me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. <sighs> <laughs> oh, very good, my people. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self, here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Ah, so that was just a performance. 
How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Your personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful! Our future may yet be bright after all. It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosalor, stand within the Opera Epicles, so long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now. Was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nervillette. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. No need for fright. And do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right. Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you and to bring your words back to him. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son.
Uh, Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. <laughs> That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Have they found anything? I'm... afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods, after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. The day is finally over. I haven't had a moment to breathe this whole time. But it's good to see that everything's getting on track. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going, and everyone will be saved. Alright, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Uh, there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before! Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear, loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. Show the people that there is nothing to worry about. I just don't know when these days will end. I feel utterly exhausted. Best to rest early today, too. Farina, it's oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deoteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer, a descendant of a line most ardent. <laughs> Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are... are you crying? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> oh, really now? I didn't even notice. <sighs> This must be the overflow of Hydro from my person. <laughs> well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? 
No wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. <laughs> so interminable. <laughs> So lonely. Just how much longer? Hundreds of years must have passed by now. Perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. <laughs> have I reached my limit? <laughs> no. Perhaps I reached it long ago. Today I didn't even notice my own tears. I want to tell someone, anyone, about this. But would that not destroy all I've done so far? I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries. But... There's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act. And it's the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden? <laughs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... He's right. I could confide in him, couldn't I? But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> but what if... What if it's really alright? Serena, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows. Surely, it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it. Long and hard. Nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. <sighs> F 
fine. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the Oratrice. But really... Some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratrice. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydra Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be... Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. <sighs> but... Oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydra.
Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the Heavenly Principle stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the God of Justice, and is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, Justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on, that should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land. When you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence, but these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us, and I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. The hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years.
Dex Nivellet. Hereby declare, people of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. <sighs> but since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must mete out punishment to that beast. I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine, the beast that enacts the prophecy, its name is the All-Devouring Narwhal. Come with me, Traveler. The hour of execution has come. of the ancient dragon's power with you. We shall look for an opening together. We can feel the Take flight!
thanks for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh well. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point. But they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. That power... Who are you exactly? Uh, Paimon has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be Child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he gave us the impression that she was the... Uh, less... talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring Narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring Narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative, it eats too much, and I have more important things to do with my time than pet-sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. I... Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His name is Sir Tologi. Huh? I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Huh. How should I describe him then? Have you heard of the name The Fowl? The Fowl? Still nothing? Well, how about the Visionary? Vetterfulnir, then? Or Gold Rhindaughter? Ooh! That one we've heard! Rhindaughter's part of the Hexen Circle! She's Albedo's mom, right? Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhindaughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Paimon didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you. That the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the Heavenly Principles. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away.
Initiate emergency rescue! Pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. Exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that Duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on! Let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. 
I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too! Ah, uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies, and is helping with our work. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as Espina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You here too, Clarion? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision-makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel. About what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Uh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Uh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let him off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo gather up and smile. Was it a good shot? Did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clarand. Wow, you really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess, too. I asked Sijuin, who told Monsieur Nervillette, and he told you, right? That's a... very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillette asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. Stay safe now, and tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. to this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Duke! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke. Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. No need to thank me. 
But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course! All right then, this way. Uh, uh. Hmm? Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um, Miss Charlotte, do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier, hmm? Sir, please don't say things like that. <laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Might this interview be very important to you, then? No, I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle, the ark that saved the people! Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend! Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? Huh! Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Did you really have to use the word couple? Well, then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. <sighs> We've seen this kind of thing before. Oh, seems like everyone's here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? Ah, Sijuin. Uh, uh... Hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure! Come on, Miss Sijuin, over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Oh, uh, sure! Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jurier? Miss Lorvine? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, just pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that Harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine, and the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things gonna change for you too? What change can there be? The Fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone! The photo shoot's done! Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go! Till next time, everyone! There'll be a next time? Maybe. Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time. Until then! Alright, last stop, the docks. Quit following me. Oh, you know, I'd love to see you in one of Charlotte's photo shoots one day. Is that really necessary? 
Our line of work doesn't really require much photographing. It's precisely because we don't need the picture that they'll have value as keepsakes. We don't really look all that opposed to the idea, you know? Maybe I'm just happy that I managed to once again avoid the spotlight. I think this interview went well either way. Yes, you successfully kept prying eyes away by using Mr. Jurier and Miss Lorvina as shields. Very good. You should be happy for them. They have a bright future ahead of them. mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, oh, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal. But if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. You could just make a friend like Fremine here. Isn't that right, Fremine? <sighs> Is this what you meant by... I'll help you make some more friends. To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh... Oh, uh... Sure. Uh... Please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Fremini socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremine himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. So, how have things been, Traveler? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well... After Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a... diplomatic gift. A diplomatic gift? A gnosis? Yes, I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. Well, uh, that's true, but this is a gnosis we're talking about. Doesn't this seem a bit... Uh, irresponsible? I would agree, but I've also heard that... It seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. I... Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Ah, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? Paimon didn't think he'd have the time 
for that. But back to the topic. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Chayo? They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. That's true. When you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fatui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. So shocked by such a simple switching of sides? Father! Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the Traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. Are you going to... take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? That is our duty as Harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. A vision? <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. And that's a wrap for me. It, huh? You... you're... Greetings, Miss Journalist. Uh, um... Hello. If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians, and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will! The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Farewell, father. Oh, she has such an intimidating presence! I didn't even dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, Traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met too, and... What do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two.
Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. It is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the Hydro Element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the Primordial Sea, with constitutions similar to that of Mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragons' authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the Primordial Sea. Fossilor must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone! Yeah! And in a manner of speaking, Fossilor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people, too! <laughs> it seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring Narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association, or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. In mind the whole time. In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans. Uh, hang on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. Uh, Paimon sorta of gets it now. Either way, it seems like this ritual won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Ah, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me, before leaving the Opera House. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the Opera House, not unlike how an ordinary person might. You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. 
In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. What about you, then? What are your plans now that you've regained your full powers as the Hydro Dragon? After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the knave as a diplomatic gift or something! Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more. And I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! Paimon thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to child! Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume? I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Natlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. The Captain? Sounds like a real tough customer! Seriously, everywhere you look, there's a Fatui Harbinger doing their thing! I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Uh, hang on a sec. Paimon still got a question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. Well, we're going to head topside to see what's going on. You hurry over soon as well, all right, Nervalet? What next? Hmm... 
The all-devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power, what it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons, but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young and I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense, which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger, then? That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of... the Third Descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paimon just thought they looked like chess pieces! How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui! If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. I had guessed that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all? That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck! <sighs> Once Child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way! I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. Alright. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now! Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But... she sacrificed herself in the end as a god, and she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the Earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, 
and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what ultimately is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? Thank you.